can see from our list of attendees, we have people from all around the world uh, here to listen to Introduction to Spark Systems Pro Elaborate. So whether it's morning, afternoon, evening or night, I'd like to welcome you all. My name's Scott Hebbard, I'm your host tonight, and I'm joined by Nizam Mohammed, who is our Sparks Systems Pro Elaborate Evangelist and is very passionate and has worked with customers on getting ProLaborate um, to help meet all of their needs. So we're really looking forward to hearing about Spark Systems ProLaborate and uh, going back to basics and getting a bit of an introduction to the product, what it can do and how it can help you. So the agenda for this session, I'm going to show you how to submit questions. Then I'm going to hand over to Nizam who is going to introduce Spark Systems for Elaborate. And uh, at the end, we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, please note that audio is muted for all participants. Uh, you will be able to type questions to the host. And if we can't follow all questions live, then we'll follow up offline. And I'm sure Nizam would be happy to hear from people that want uh, demonstrations and want to learn more about ProLaborate and we're here to help. So looking forward to your questions. Uh, please don't, on the right hand side of the screen, there's a uh, go to meeting or go to webinar Q&A box. So simply enter the question in the text box and you can hit enter on the numeric keypad or hit send and that'll come through to myself as a host. And I look forward to uh, getting some of those questions answered at the end of the session. But right now, I'd like to hand over to Nazar and uh, start the presentation on uh, Introduction to Spark Systems Pro Elaborate. So, uh, hi Nazar, it's great to uh, hear from you again and um, I look forward to finding out all the basics and introductory material about Pro Elaborate and um, it might be able to help some of our customers. So handing over to you. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, hello everyone, this is Nizam. Um, uh, thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, some of you might have listened to our sessions in the past, uh, but just a bit about myself. I've been associated with Spark Systems for the last 15 years in various capacity, and now operating as the product manager for ProLaborate. So in this session, um, we'll be talking about the the roots of ProLaborate. That is, what are or what were the use cases that really drove us to come up with a product called ProLaborate. So I've been a Sparks EA consultant forever, for for I mean, as I said, for a, for a while now, and we've been working with clients in different capacities, implementing architecture practice for them. And we've been having a few pain, we've been noticing a few pain points recurring in every every single deployment. And those pain points or the use cases were the key drivers for coming up with a solution called Pro Elaborate. Uh, you know, so as someone who has been who've been involved with Pro Elaborate since its idea to an implementation and now seeing it being used by you know hundreds of users across the world is a real pleasure for me. And so we thought like Scott and I, we thought we should have a session that goes back to the roots of ProLaborate and talk about what are those core use cases that drove us or like that's still driving us to do the ProLaborate solution. There are so many other videos and webinars that we have done on advanced items like integrations and reviews and dashboards. You'll see plenty of them available in the YouTube channel, but this one is going to go back to the basics and roots and just talk about uh, the four core use cases that made us put in those efforts to develop a solution like this. So with that said, I'm jumping into this session, just confirming, Scott, you're able to see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. It looks great and sounds great. So thanks, Nizam. Th thank you, Scott. Um, so what we are going to do is we're just going to go back and say this is the crux, enterprise architect. As you all know, that's the modeling platform that we are also used to, and we can create a variety of models in it. 
like you know we can customize it configure it for various purposes uh, so the entire solution uh, the spark systems enterprise architecture platform what we call it now is centered around enterprise architect and then there is this pro cloud server api which kind of exposes or helps us expose this model information to the web platforms and to various other tools and then comes Prolaborate, which uses this ProCloud Server API to access the model information from Enterprise Architect and present it in dashboards and portals that are, you know, specifically targeted towards the stakeholders who are non-IT users, so non-EA users. So we are seeing a complete um, you know, completely different segment here. So enterprise architect, the users who are focused on creating and developing models and the users who really would like to consume the model, but have always had some inhibition to take up that learning curve that is involved in taking a, a full-fledged modeling tool and trying to understand the nuances of it. So those are the people who we try to target with Prolaborate. So that's what we're going to focus on this webinar as well. And then I'm, I'm again, just trying to give a full picture of what the Spark Systems Enterprise Architecture Platform today stands for. So it has what started as a core modeling tool, what has been a core modeling tool and what is still a core modeling tool is now expanded into a variety of uh, you know, options to, to make it a very integral part of uh, enterprise uh, architecture landscape. So you know the 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 one behind beyond Prolaborate is what uh, we call the integration layer. The way we can integrate EA models with the tools like Jira, Doors, or ServiceNow, or Confluence, or um, SharePoint, or like you can name them. Any tool with the REST API will be able to uh, be attached with the Enterprise Architecture repository. So you know we all have a sense that you know a single source of truth is more than just a single tool so there is always going to be a variety of tools and now with all these you know uh, different components in the spark systems platform we are well positioned to be uh, integrated with the rest of the tools in the enterprise landscape and lastly we have now got the complete saas platform um, enabled again through this uh, API is offered by ProCloud Server and the entire platform now uh, readily available and hosted in AWS or Azure uh, servers depending on what is convenient and now you know instead of having to worry about all the infrastructure overheads we can avail it as a SaaS or a PaaS uh, variation so you know this is just to give a quick synopsis of how EA as a tool has evolved and the platform has evolved into multiple facets. But the focus of this webinar is pro pro primarily going to be Prolaborate and the four uh, use cases that drove Prolaborate. So uh, just as I mentioned during the start, there are a variety of things that Prolaborate could do. So, uh, you know, it's just, these are some of the core features that we always see customers getting excited about, like ability to simplify, integrate, curate, dashboards, collaborations, et cetera. But I'm not going to get into a feature specific, you know, overview this time. Uh, there are several videos available in our YouTube channel that you can refer to if you want to have a deep dive into any of these. But, you know, I'm just going to, in this webinar, focus on the customers or the users who really ought to use the enterprise architect models that we create and what we can do to take these models to those users to maximize the value of our modeling efforts. So that's where Prolaborate's use cases come into picture. So these are the four use cases that I'll be delving into detail. Uh, what I mean by uh, like these, what I'm referring to in these use cases, a better focus, 
uh, we all know enterprise architect models are quite comprehensive. You know, it, it could do a variety of things. It could do enterprise architecture, process architecture, solution architecture, data architecture, technology architecture. And we can even delve so deep into a, a solution design uh, to go into the UML and even code generation. So there is a whole raft of things that our models could have. But the stakeholders differ. So the stakeholders could be your CXOs, it could be your head offs, it could be your testing team, it could be your product development team, it could be your product management team. There could be a variety of audience. So how can we have a better focus from them? How can we selectively share the parts of the model that really matters to them? So that's the first use case we'll be exploring. And the second one will be, how do I simplify model information? For example, again, as a process architect or as an application architect, I kind of have a tendency to use the BPMN or Arcumate or TOGAP to do my modeling. But for a non-EA user, all these standards mean very little. All they would like to see is the information that is relevant to them. So how do we balance this? EA offers that rich set of tools to enable model-driven, mo like, you know, um, standards-driven modeling. But how do we take that and connect it to the users who are really scared or overwhelmed by seeing anything that is standards-driven? So that's the second pain point or the use case. And the third thing is, there's a lot of information in a model. So we, we, we spend a whole lot of time, efforts to create models. We, we collect them from everywhere. You know, we, the idea of models is to move from Excels and Visios and PowerPoints. And when we combine all this into one thing, there's not just diagrams that we are talking about. We are talking about the tag values. Um, and we are talking about the connectors. So there's a lot of information in the model, but how do we really make it presentable to the users who are so skeptical or who are kind of paranoid to look at all these technical nuances. How do we balance this? How do we curate the model information to a user who is completely oblivious of anything that's technical? So that's the third use case that we'll be looking at. And fourth and the last one, that's like, again, I'm just talking about the four core use cases. And the fourth one is, it's always perceived to be a completely isolated discipline. Architecture or modeling and modelers are seen as a completely isolated discipline so much so I don't even get people to come for a coffee with me. Like, you know, they just think I'm from a different world, but it's not the case. We have to be the epicenter uh, in, a mo in, 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 in the business strategy, in product development, in you know, process optimization, anything and everything should be driven off models. And how do we achieve it? By engaging those people who really have to make sense of the models in the right ways so they feel part of it and we continuously evolve with architecture or the models rather than we sitting in a separate you know, floor and just talking to ourselves and doing some models. So these are the four use cases. And most of you might be able to relate to it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just talking from a consultant standpoint. As I said, the whole ProLaborate concept came from a consulting background. So we've been working with clients over and over, and then we figured out these pain points are just, you know, seen everywhere. And it is happening to be the bottleneck in, in, in everything, we were not able to get the buy-ins that we want. We were not able to get the budget approvals that we want. Like, you know, people were always looking at architecture as the secondary secondary work and product development or, you know, the hardcore, like the development to be the primary thing. So we were trying to figure out what are the ways we could really break this barrier and make enterprise architecture the epicenter or the modeling the epicenter of everything else. And that's, those are the four use cases that we'll be looking at. So if you if I have to start with the first use case, which is how do I selectively show or hide model contents? So as I as we just uh, discussed in the uh, in the intro quickly, the models are really uh, heavy. Most cases, if you have a complete model with multiple teams working in a collaborative manner to create those models, that's the benefit of enterprise architect and the modeling. 
uh, but that also turns out to be on a flip side becoming uh, a little more complicated than what the end users would perceive it to be or would expect it to be but we have to strike a balance like you know you can't expect to just look at the code and understand it there should be a better way to articulate that to the users who don't understand code the same analogy applies here as well the architecture of the modeling should be comprehensive it should be complete but at the same time there should be ways to pick and choose things that needs to be shared to the users Yes, you could talk about Word documents being published from these models, but hey, we are trying to do this digital uh, move everywhere. And like, you know, still, I would say documentations are inevitable, but not at the time of evolving your models and printing or generating or doing documents and sharing it to the use users just for the purpose of getting their opinion is an outdated concept is what I personally feel. So there should be a way to, selectively share model contents and the next one is it's not just you know uh, like the uh, the conventional ways of publishing through HTMLs and XMI so there are ways in EA which are con currently used or which were used in the past that will let us pick a data or a pick a package and share it to a user but most of these have its own limitations and XMI you still have to, uh, you still expect the other user uh, whom you're trying to share the model to have enterprise architect understanding. They should be able to, you know, import it to navigate through the package structure and try to find what they want. And HTML publish, it's, it's, it used to be one of the great uh, and the most used options to publish your models but still that's a static one so we have options to generate it overnight and things like that but it's still very limited in terms of curation or simplification so you know there are there should be a better way that was the first use case and this just this uh, animation just illustrates what i'm trying to say so we have a full fully developed enterprise architecture model which has contents for client management product management supply management etc but you know we have different teams whom we we want to cater to and what i want is for the client management team i want a model or a view that just shows information that is relevant to them of course i would like to include all those cross references or the things from the catalog that they are using but i don't want to share something confidential from a product management or a finance team similarly product management team i would like to create a separate view for them where it's only things that are relevant to them and same goes to supply management team so this is just to illustrate that the same repository should be there it should be integrated it should have a lot of interconnections which we would anyways have when we are building a model but when we go to their specific view we would like to show just the things that are relevant to them and how did we handle this use case in prolaborate we came up with something called sections so this was the first feature that i can remember that we implemented in prolaborate and what it was trying to do was we should have a way to just pick and choose packages or sub packages or a part of the model and drag it into my project and that package or those packages will eventually become the complete view so everything else that's not included in this selection will be out of uh, my users view so they will never get to see it in this project in this elaborate project so you could select individual packages or you could select the entire route whatever ways you are convenient you could just drag and drop and define these sections and the second feature that we were looking at is we should have a very granular access control mechanism so enterprise architecture goes way beyond just having you know a, a read view of contents we need to allow people to collaborate we need to allow people to edit a selected information if needed uh, so and it can't be just at a package level. We wanted this level of granularity at an element level or even further We wanted it at an attribute level. So in the next section We will see how the simplification will be taking uh, the next gear when we go to an attribute level simplification, but 
in access controls, Prolaborate solves the problem of again showing and hiding information to the users with access control. So in amongst the sections that we previously defined, you can still slice and dice and just show information that are relevant to the user groups. So you can have permissions assigned for users or user groups and only those users or user groups that has permission to a package will be able to see them in their viewport. So the diagrams or elements or the packages from anywhere that a user does not have permission will not appear in his view portal. So this is another layer of uh, you know a control that we could have to make sure the people or the users get to see exactly what they intend to see. And by the way of linking to an Active Directory group or a SAML group, what we are able to achieve is do this configuration once. So just connect your Active Directory group to your access permission control and everyone who is added or removed to that Active Directory group will be getting the same access control that we have set here. So in that way, you don't really have to do the user management twice as well. So that's that's the core use case. How do we cater to the different roles and different users and just show them what's relevant? So that's the first use case. So you know, a way to get a better focus. And once that is done, then what we realized was, okay, I'm now able to show my contents or share my contents to the users, but how about making it more readable or comprehensible by those users? Because in EA, as you all know, the information, it's, all, it's comprehensive, it's standards driven. There's a variety of things you could do. Every element, every artifact will, could have rules, could have scenarios, could have constraints could have basic properties, advanced properties, tags. There's a variety of things that we as modelers, we need to uh, we need to model the information. But how about we sharing this information to someone who has very little time and very little, pay, like, you know, very limited patience to understand it. What we need to do is to simplify that view for those users so that they could just get a grasp of it really, really quick. So that's the second use case that we were trying to do. And how we did that was using, um, you know, so the, the way we did it was we wanted to let users define custom dashboards and custom forms for roles or user groups so that the user groups who we wanted to show selected information just gets to see that. So in the previous use case, we were solving, showing or hiding the entire section, parts of the model. Now we are talking about attributes. For example, a BPMN 2.0 activity for people who are here who are process modelers. If you could take a wild guess on how many tagged values are there in a BPMN 2.0 activity, uh, I don't think many of us will get it right unless you have sat and counted it like what I have done. That's that's the that's the complex complications that I'm talking about. So we don't want to show those 76 odd attributes for a BPM and 2.0 activity and expect a business user to make sense of it. So we wanted to introduce a way to you know minimize that form or like you know customize the form, give enough help information in the form so that the users can make sense of what they're doing or what they're seeing, and even more. You know, even after we do modeling, after several months of modeling, and then comes the application management team or the IT team who has to maintain the application information or the project information. And guess what they use? Excel, inevitably Excel. How much ever we try to emphasize, they will use Excel. So we wanted them to use the models or the modeling tool to update that information. They are not going to draw diagrams. They are just going to update the status or the life cycle or the health indicator or the maintenance or the phase. Things that are already modeled in our repository, but that needs an update. So what we thought, why don't we give them a form that just lets them update the information that they need to update. 
we don't want them to play or muck with the model without enough information and just spoil the whole thing. Model integrity matters. But imagine if I can share a link to a user who just has to update the status of the application and the life cycle of the application, I can do that with, with Prolaborate. We have this granular access control at an attribute level, which will let me say which attributes are read only and which attributes are editable. So even if a user has right access to an attribute, he or she will only be able to edit those attributes that have been, that have been marked as read only sorry, that have been marked as editable. So those are the attribute level, uh, you know, details that we wanted to address. And the way we do it, again, just a quick view of a process modelers, uh, you know, view in EA. As you know, it's quite comprehensive. We have everything in our in our hands to do a full, full you know, fully uh, packaged, process models, L0, L1, L2, interrelationships, all the BPM and 2.0 attributes, everything ready for us. But as I said, if I try to share this to a user who has no idea of what all this means, for him, it's just Greek and Latin. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have used that. But anyway, so it's just, it, it wouldn't really make a lot of sense for him. But uh, similarly, this is an application architect's view. So if you manage to navigate through the 100 levels of packages to find your diagram and then click on your application and then look at its details, it's great, it makes sense. But what we wanted is a custom, simpler form just given to them in a platter. So they click, they see the details, nothing more. It's as if opening a document and reading a table with just the information that they want. That's the user experience we wanted to imitate, but on a live model. So what we are talking about is not static. We are talking about connecting to a live EA model and just sharing the information that we would otherwise publish in a Word document. So this form designer of Prolaborate shows you how for every single artifact or technically we call them the stereotype in EA, we can customize the user's view or form. So this is for BPM and 2.0 activity. I can say how my form should look like. And these are the technology or the BPM and 2.0 attributes and I can add or remove them at my will. And even for those attributes that I have added, I can, I can add a help text to make sure my end user understands what it means. For example, ad hoc ordering could mean nothing to my end user. If you are really using it in your process models, you really have to tell them what it is. So you can give them a tooltip to indicate what it is. And furthermore, I can say this particular attribute is going to be read only no matter what. Even if a user has right access to this in Prolaborate, he can't edit this. Neither can he edit the notes. So I can set which attribute he can, he or she can edit or not. And the second thing I said is give them in a give it to them in a very easy to access platter. So when they log in, when the non-technical user just logs in, he or she doesn't get to see the the, the hierarchy of packages or uh, you know hundreds of diagrams in front of them. All they get to see is that minimal set of diagrams that he or she is expected to view, review, and share his or her feedback. So that's that's the view that we can let a user land on. And then when they click on one of those processes, they get a very neat interface in their web browsers. Again, like this, as you could see, it's a web browser. You don't have to have any installations. And what you see is not just sharing it in web. A HTML publish can share it in a web browser. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking about simplifying the information and making it comprehensible by anyone even with very little technical knowledge. Imagine a CSR, imagine someone in the field doing, doing some task. If you want to share your processes to them, that's the solution we are talking about. And as you could see, when a process is clicked, you get to see the discussions in it. We'll, see about, we'll look that a bit later, but you could also see 
the minimal form that we have defined for it. So it just shows the notes related to it and the author and the type of it. And then you also see the applications connected to it. Again, this is the form that I have put together for this uh, BPMN 2.0 activity type. So it's customizable. It could be role specific as well. And you know, just a step further, you could see that you know the forms shows which fields can be edited, which fields can be edited, and there is a tooltip that indicates what it exactly means. And then you also can, if the users are a bit inquisitive, they want to understand what is this connected to, what is an artifact connected to, they could even see the traceability information, or they could even see the other diagrams where this is used. But we wouldn't consider all these as our primary, primary use cases. It is this showing the information that he or she would really like to see just by clicking on something. So that's what we facilitate with this form designer. So we have just seen the first two use cases, which is like, you know, the better focus and simplification. And now we are going to talk about curation. And what do we mean by curation? Again, as I said, there is a lot of data in your EA models. We have hundreds of tag values. We have interrelationships. We have, we have, uh, you know, the details or the traceability information model through connectors. So the tag values is is the key part of models. If you if you ask me what is the most important aspect of my if, of a model that I create, I wouldn't say diagrams. It's the relationships and the tag values. That's that's the you know most important things. But hey, that's still data. You know how do I really make use of the data? You need to have some you know way for people to do their analysis, their due diligence. How do I do that? That's our third use case. In the past, we've been exporting data from EA into Excel and then using some BI dashboards or some visualization tools to be able to drive these dashboards. Most of you might have done it, but we wanted to have an integrated view in which we could just take the information from EA, again, live information from EA, and do all that's necessary to let people drive their decisions based on that. So you could see that you know you, your models very easily can have multi-layer relationships. You know it's it's very important information as you could see from motivation to business application information technology layers. But to make sense of it, you need to know how to look at it. You need to know how to look at the traceability window. You need to know how to do the insert related elements or whatever. But there are better ways. Again, there are ways to just target the non-technical users. I'm emphasizing this again and again because we like Prolaborate's whole idea is to take the models to the people who are not modelers. If you are, you know, if the team is only comprised of modelers, I don't think Prolaborate has a need or uh, I mean has a, a use case there. This if you intend to take your models to a team that's not a modeling team, well, that's where Prolaborate comes into picture. So as we saw previously, we can have personalized dashboards. So these dashboards can again be personalized to a role, to a group, or to even an individual user. So it's it's personalized dashboard. And what's there in those personalized dashboards? If you take a look at this, I've got an application inventory. I've got a list of applications. And the applications, each of them have a variety of tagged values, which are really business data. Like, you know, these are important data that we would have collected it from a CMDB system or uh, an external application inventory. But what's the use of it? I can drive real-time dashboards like this. So this is driven by the data from EA. And what this gives me is a real-time application portfolio management dashboard that has all the charts and bubble charts and roadmaps that are that are understood by the users who really want to consume it. So if someone wants to understand uh, the high critical applications in that are web-based, they could just hover over it or even click on it to get a list of applications that matches their criteria. 
Similarly, let's say for a business analysis uh, person, for a business analyst, you have the requirements in the model. Again, as you could see, it's deep down in uh, in a location in the EA model somewhere. But you know, you have all the information for a modeler or a BA who is using EA to create all the information. But how do I really take this to a user who who doesn't have that you know that that understanding of enterprise architect? I can just simply define a business analysis dashboard that just gets it gets the details to him in a simple platter. As you could see, this is a dashboard that says these are the could have, must have, should have, and you know won't have requirements. And just a click on it, he or she will be able to see the list with all the details. So you know, it, so everything is incorporated. So if I click here, I'll get a list. If I click on the list item, I will get the properties that I have already defined. So he or she will only get to see the information that I want him or her to see. So that's that's all uh, kind of part of the user experience. And there are other things. Again, I'm not going to delve deep into these things now, but Prolaborate intends to be that platform that consolidates information from multiple tools. So you could even see the Jira items shown here on a live basis for the BA to understand what's happening on the other side. But again, that's a subject of a different webinar. There are information available in the YouTube uh, that you can refer to. Again, just uh, so coming back to the focus, our, the third use case was how do I convert the data that I have in EA? That's a result of several months or even years of you know, modeling efforts, how do I really make it appealing to the users who are not EA users? So that's what we have uh, achieved by offering a variety of visualizations. For example, you have a connection all the way from you know your visions to your business layers, to your application layers. That kind of information is incredibly useful, but how do a business user use it? So we have the heat maps and tree maps and landscape diagrams all of these are auto generated based on some predefined configurations and when i say predefined configurations i'm not talking about sql queries or scripts or anything like that you can just say my meta model is a to b to c and then the landscape will be auto generated based on that so you know if you want to dive deeper into any of these you can always reach out to our team we could do a demo or we could have even share you the resources on how to do it but in this webinar, I'm just saying the whole idea of all these charts is to just make sure the connectors, the tagged values, and all those things that we do in EA are really taken to the users at the right, um, you know, at, at the right in the right level of details that they can comprehend and understand. So it's really intuitive. So uh, you know, this is just three level of information shown here, and just by clicking on these things, people can you know switch to it's it's a multi-level nested pie and it's intuitive it's a it's an interactive one and people could just click to understand the interdependencies and there are various other charts like the roadmaps uh, which are again live you could just set a start date and end date for an application or for a project and you could generate a roadmap which is regularly updated you could have your bubble chart to do your you know uh, if you want to understand the business significance of your portfolio or your application so there are a variety of things that we have done and each one has been driven by uh, actual use case from a customer so you know our the prolaborates motto is just listen to the customers and do what they want like we don't want to be very comprehensive we don't want to do everything in the world but we just want to do things that are really used by the users and i we we always have this design um, you know mantra which says uh, if 80 percent of the users use just 10 percent of the features we'll just focus on those 10 percent and we will make it wor work well instead of trying to focus on the remaining 90 percent of the features which are hardly used so we are still limiting ourselves to that 10 percent of the core features in ea that most people use and we are trying to make it easier for it to be accessible and with that said i'm just coming to the last use case that we were thinking which is the engagement part as i said engagement has been the biggest ban or like it has been the biggest barrier for us uh, to take our ea models to the wider users 
we've been always seen as someone sitting in a completely isolated environment with no context or understanding of what's going on in the rest of the world. And that's a big myth that has to change. And how do we do it? We have done all the models. Uh, and how do we break this tower syndrome? So we need to be positioned almost in the middle. Again, I'm talking concepts. I just, these are, you know, well-known concepts for everyone. But these are the scenarios that we factored in when we decided to go and introduce a collaboration platform ourselves. You know, we had a variety of options. We had Yammer, we had Confluence, we had various other things. But what we really wanted was, why shouldn't an enterprise architecture platform also be a socializing platform? We have so rich contents in EA, it has a variety of you know it has so interconnected details from from all the way from the vision layer down to solution architecture and implementation why shouldn't it be also the socializing platform and that's where uh, we also understood that seamless collaboration and reviews between the enterprise architects and the rest of the world is is absolutely essential to make the models iteratively develop so it's not the conventional approach of just we do the model pass it on we go for a break and then they just do whatever with it that's that's outdated and that's that's dead case what we are really looking at now is with all these agile teams and like you know the fast-paced um, environments we want to have it in an iterative way we just build it make it fly and then build the next Pass. Like, you know, as in the agile world, we say minimum viable product that is now applicable even for the modeling modeling uh, tasks. So we wanted a way to engage and collaborate seamlessly in, a, in an environment or in an interface that the users are so con comfortable with. We, you know, the, the benchmarks for us when we developed this was the LinkedIn and Yammer. Even Confluence wasn't that that popular when we started yammer was the tool that i used to have in a number of my teams and we thought why shouldn't we do something as intuitive as a yammer or a linkedin but tie it to the model so we have a collaboration platform that you could use pretty much like your social media platform but you can refer to ea diagrams ea elements ea packages you can refer to users in your models you can use a you can refer to active directory users uh, roles or groups so it's a collaboration platform that's been built uh with ea in the in the back end so all the ea model contents in the back end so you have in-app notifications you have email notifications to your outlook to your mobile phone so that you could just click on a link and you can come back and even more than that we have this way if you are working on a diagram and you want someone to look at it you could just type their emails and say hey come and have a look at this and they become a user with limited permissions uh, to view this view this particular diagram or a particular diagram so we wanted to make the socializing part so seamlessly connected with the ea modeling environment and that's where we we came up with this collaboration platform uh, and as a last step, we said, okay, now the rest of the team is doing everything using the EA models. And how do I really make the modelers informed about these changes? How do they go and make the changes in the models? So we introduced the ProLabrate add-in for EA as well, so that all the all these discussions and uh, you know the the reviews that are happening outside gets incorporated in the modeling tool itself and you get notifications or you, you get your dashboards which shows any new comments and any changes in this model gets immediately reflected in your ProLabrate dashboards. And so, you know, we have a very real time way of sharing something to the users, getting their feedback, making changes and they get to see it. So that you don't have to shoot emails, you don't have to take a phone, or you don't have to book a meeting room to talk to them about the changes. It's there. They have reminders, they have notifications saying that the model is available and there's a review that expects their feedback. So we have tried to make it as you know real time and as robust as possible. So you have a fully defined collaboration platform that works on top of EA. So those are the four use cases that I uh, really wanted to uh, look at in this webinar. As I said, 
I could have spoken about a number of other detailed uh, topics in Prolabrate, but this one was very close to my heart because I, as a person, has been involved in this Prolabrate from the day it was an idea to what it is now, been used by several hundreds of clients across the world, and we are seeing some raving positive reviews from them. And now I wanted to give Scott and I, we really thought about this idea to give users a flavor of the crux of why Prolabrate was introduced as part of a Spark Systems platform and how that really relates to a current EA user. So as a next step, you know, uh, you could you could reach out to us if you want to know more about any of these. There's a YouTube link that Scott has already shared, the uh, link in the chat window, uh, which has a lot of videos if you want to dive deeper for example, to a Confluence integration or a Jira integration or reviews or any of these features, there's plenty of help and videos available. Or if you want to take a, uh, you know, talk to us to take a demo or to have a proof of concept to run your models in Prolaborate, please reach out to us um, and we'll be, our team will be quickly uh, able to take a, uh, you know, fix a time with you, have a call with you and, and and see how we can help. So thanks for this call. I've call. provided a link to the uh, Prolaborate page on the Spark Systems website, and from there, you can get contact details for how to contact the sales team, and uh, so that uh, Nizam and the team can get in touch and can help you with a uh, specific use case or implementation about getting Prolaborate up and running. Uh, it's been great to get an overview uh, to see those four you know, simple use cases about better focus, about the ability to simplify, to curate and to engage. I think sometimes we forget that um, Enterprise Architect is so powerful, it has the ability to do code engineering, software engineering, software development, business process management, simulation. It's very, very powerful, but sometimes the audience doesn't need to see Everything, they just need to see um, a focused section. And sometimes the people that will be consuming those models will not necessarily be the enterprise architects or the people with the technical know-how. They just want to be able to consume it. So what Nizam's been able to do in a very short period of time is show you how you can simplify those models, how you can use some simple charts how you can provide better focus and how you can curate. So one of the questions that we had was from um, Wolfgang, and I know you did mention some Nizam in your presentation, but what kind of charts are available in Prolaborate? And um, it mentions burn down charts, but I was wondering if you might be able to mention what are some of the charts that are available in Prolaborate? Okay, so in terms of uh, the charts available, and specifically the question is about burn down charts, that's more to track sprints. Uh, I mean, I have to say that is yet to be implemented in Prolaborate because we, we are, we are tr still trying to find an effective way to have snapshots of, or like, you know, data. At, I mean, data should be captured at a specific time, sh time sprints, and then we need to do a chart on that so we are still working on it but the kind of charts that's available here is like you know uh, anything that will help you create uh, things like a pie chart or a bar chart or uh, you know the multi-level charts like heat maps tree tree maps or uh, nested pies and uh, road road maps bubble charts and uh, you know all those standard charts which you can tie to your ea models uh, that is current and live and generate a data and these charts gets updated uh, on a real time basis so we, we there, there there are uh, at least a list of uh, 16 charts for now with a variety of uh, visualization options as well so we are using some standard charts library and we have made almost all the customizations open in prolaborate as well so you could choose colors sizes all those variations can be done but if there is a compelling need for another chart, as I said, like you know, we are driven by the the requests. So if if you if you have a specific thing in your mind, please do drop us an email, and we'll let you know what's the feasibility or you know what what is that which is preventing us from doing it. Thanks, Nizam, and I think there's 
a vast number of uh, charts that you've mentioned there that can really help uh, bring that data to life. I suppose one of the other things that you pointed out, which is quite um, important and valuable, is the fact that all of this can be consumed via a, um, a simple web connection. And not only that, but you're seeing the data live. So if uh, the software development team or enterprise architect makes changes to the model, then those changes are made um, available and can be consumed immediately, which is um, pretty amazing. And I think even here at Spark Systems, we take it for granted that we you know, work with people all around the world and we update the model and uh, people are working from home and from different locations and you know, that is and can be made available instantly to your customers wherever they might be. Uh, got another question here um, from Dennis saying, uh, if I hide some uh, packages for a management view, uh, is a diagram then completely shown? Is there a, an ability um, to hide a package? Um, can you hide parts of uh, the diagram too? So perhaps you can talk about some of the um, ability yeah. to tailor what information is shown. Yeah, I, I think that's a very good question. So, uh, so what that question is uh, referring to is I have a package. I think this session would have expired by now, but I have a diagram which has elements from packages that I have hidden. So I'm choosing my sections and I have, I've, so I'll just go back to, I've, I've chosen to hide a package, but the diagram as an element that is from the hidden package will my diagram show it or will it be removed from my view portal so the answer is we we are i mean it will be shown and why is it shown because we are just using the eas diagram and and showing it in a web browser but what will be the limitation so the first level of details will be shown uh, so I click on it. I get to see the basic details that is in my form But if I try to do anything else like you know looking at its traceability or going any further It would say you don't have access to it or you don't have permissions to it So if, imagine this use case is coming from a package which is sorry if this use case is coming from a package which is not uh, in my I, I click if this use case is coming from a package that's not in the set of packages that I've included, it will still be shown in the diagram. The first set of properties have to be shown, but it will be read only for sure. But clicking on it or trying to do anything on it will let you know that it's not accessible. So we haven't got that, uh, you know, we, 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 we won't be able to remove it from the diagram uh, as such. Thanks, Nazam. I've got another question here um, from Wolfgang that says, how can external data be connected with Prolaborate? So what are some of the ways that you can connect Prolaborate to external data sources and be able to bring it in? Yeah, so as in one of my dashboards, I showed like, you know, we, we have proper integrations with some of the external tools. But if you are talking about bringing in uh, something from an Excel or another uh, thing like the data mining capability in EA is what we still use. So the bulk, like, you know, if someone is really uh, trying to bring in things that are in a different format, not from a Jira or a Doors or a JAMA or a TFS, so because we have integrations to each of these commonly used tools. But if you are talking about bringing in data from just a uh, 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 you know, a, 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 like a Excel or a XML or anything like that, then that would mean you have to use the data mining capability of EA to bring it to the model and then look at it. But when it comes to uh, Prolaborate, you know, what we are again focusing is if you are a business user, you want to use Excel to create a few things. You know, Excel is inevitable. So uh, if you want to use Excel, you have an Excel interface in Prolaborate itself. And you could just say, I want to create a few elements within this package, type it as if you'll do it in Excel, and then just say add elements, and it will go and add it to that package. So that kind of import, like again, for the people who are really um, not, not that tech savvy to go and do those imports in EA, they can do it here. But anything that is beyond the standard integrations with other tools, um, 
like you know i i can have a dashboard from jira showing me all the latest items or i can have a dashboard from service now or jama showing me all the live items but if i understand your question write me correct me if i'm wrong like you know i can i'm happy to have a chat with you later but if i understand your correct question right you are looking at some uh, uh some external source of data being plugged into ea like we could do in e like you know uh, in ea so uh it, it's not possible in prolabrate it's either possible through the ea interface or through the procloud server rest api and i think you know that's why we have the best of both worlds that you know you can do all of the comprehensive modeling in enterprise architect you can have a dashboard that shows uh, jira um, and um, some of those other services um, and so you've got the world's best modeling tool and you can refer to some of that other data if necessary uh, i've got a question here from dennis that is looking at um you know running the different services and talks about um, integrations with Active Directory and can it be done completely with the ProCloud server um, without Microsoft IIS? Um, but perhaps you could just talk about, you know, support for Active Directory and version control and, um, and some of those things, Nizam. Yep, sure. So as I mentioned, Active Directory live integration is one of our, uh, you know, one of our primary use case because, you know, we didn't want to do a, a double user management task. And so what you could see here, this is again for the people who are a bit tech savvy. This is the typical deployment diagram and where we are seeing Active Directory or SAML uh, as directly integrating to Prolabrate. And you know you can have your Active Directory users and user groups imported into Prolabrate and then configured in Prolabrate directly. So any changes in your Active Directory comes direct to this. Um, and you know similarly you could in stuff if you're not using LDAP, you can even have your SAML integration. And what we are talking about is a live integration with these external uh, like you know this authentication servers. So a change in uh, addition or deletion in an Active Directory group will be automatically taken care of. So the next time when a user with an Active Directory, uh, you know, who has lost access to an Active Directory group, he tries to access the portal, the SSO, the single sign-on won't work and it will he will be refused entry. Similarly, if a user is added, he will be automatically given entry. So you don't have to do a double um, management user management task at all. Thanks, Nizam. Uh, I know you showed a business process example where I think there was 72 or 76 tagged values and you are able to, you know, create a, a nice form with only five or six and only some could be edited. Um, Sebastian has asked, curating information is very interesting. The key is to set appropriate tagged values and it says, would you please be able to comment? So apart from the business process example that you showed, where are some examples where being able to, you know, um, set appropriate tag values has really helped your customers? Absolutely. See, the the uh, it's it's a great question again. So it's not just BPMN, as you could see. Uh, it's it it supports. Uh, you, you could define your own in Prolabrate, or you could have your EA MDG that you have defined uh, for you know for your own, like your proprietary MDG can also be imported into EA and you can even define uh, tagged values in Prolabrate itself. So I can define almost the same types of tagged values that we can uh, do in EA, like the ref good or enum. And uh, so if I want to define a new tag and I want to type enum, so again, the, the only limitation is this will be added to EA right away, but it won't be part of a standardized MDG or anything like that. The reason I'm emphasizing MDG is coming from a consulting background. One of the things that we do as a very first thing is to make sure there is a strict meta model and that meta model is converted into some form of an MDG to make sure the rest of the team are kind of adheres to that MDG. So we have anchored the form designing very much to the MDG. All the stereotypes and tag values that you define in MDG are taken uh, into EA, into Prolabrate automatically. So it's not just BPM and you can import even a custom one, but just to show you how this form designer works, so I can have a number of profiles. 
each profile could expo you know kind of show or hide different attributes so there's a lot of sophistication there but what i'm going to show here is the form designer that i spoke about where you could see the basic ea attributes being shown and then you'll have the entire bpmn technology attributes as i said like this is the whole list of bpmn attributes and if i want to add it to my form i just drag and drop and that's my form there and then you could see the cost efforts and applications are custom tag values and i can go and define my custom tag values in prolaborate or i can even import it from ea and i can just drag and drop that as well and that will have all your definitions and whatever i define here finally becomes the the form that will be used for that particular stereotype again the mdg is taken as the default if you have an mdg with all the tagged values that becomes the default form but it will also let you customize the form further to make it even more simply simplified and with that what happens is if i go back to my uh, prolaborate model again i'm working in a actual project so it's a um, it could take a while in loading and things like that but i click on a bpmn diagram uh, and as i said this is loading from ea so if i make a change in ea it will be updated here instantly and when i look at one of these what you see is just that form that i showed there and the rep good list for example so we we have paid a lot of attention in every minute details that will be useful for the customer for example a ref good list is a proper reference to other elements if i want to understand what this application is i can just click on it and i will be taken to that applications page so it's a clickable link so every single tag value has been given the importance that ha it, that it deserves for example like ref good is one of the most powerful things that i use and i've always you know thought that there should be a click feature for the, for that so we have tried to focus into that level of uh, details and if it's a drop down as you could see the drop down up here so all these definitions can either be done in prolaborate or could be incorporated from your mdg into it directly thanks nizam i'm conscious of the time so i'll just do one last question let's imagine that we have a uh, existing spark system cu customer that spent you know, five or six years developing a very comprehensive model covering everything from code to systems engineering to enterprise architecture. But at the moment, their reporting is done mainly using Word and Excel, um, and it's yeah. very static. What are some of the benefits of using Prolaborate and how would it help their business and make them more productive um, by taking what they already have invested and developed in enterprise architect and taking it that next step further absolutely that's a great question and you know that's that's the idea like you know prolabor is good for people who are starting from scratch as well but most of the customers that are using prolabor at the moment are the users who've been using ea for for a long time and they have a very large uh, model built over years and how they see prolabor is a way to really make it uh to the next level like you know people have I've, I've seen or heard or spoken to most of these people in the past and it's all like you know should there should be a way to just take this to the people uh, to have a community-wide engagement and that's that that means a lot so you know people at the moment they could do a lot of things they could be generating documents that will take forever that could take a long time to publish documents email out to customers get their feedback I mean, when I say customers, I'm talking about internal customers, getting their feedback, making changes. It's a never, never ending loop. I've even seen people going back to Visio because they are just not able to convince the people to have a look at the EA diagrams. I, I mean, I can say a number of large teams have got a representation in EA and an equivalent representation in Visio so that people will have a look at it or even more you know we have we have seen so many xml exports html publishers happening overnight and every now and then just to make sure the models are communicated or shared to the right audience prolaborate solves a lot of it as i said it's been built with those core use cases in mind and it 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 kind of caters to the people who use who have been used ea for a while and as you could see just these four use cases you should be able to relate to it uh, had you i mean if you've been a ea user for a while
Thanks, Nizam. It's okay. been really great to get an introduction to Spark Systems Pro Elaborate and uh, to see those very four simple things about better focus, simplify, curate, and engage. So uh, just to finish up, uh, please note the uh, URLs that I sent so you can uh, access uh, Enterprise Architect 15.2 webinars and we have a number of uh, additional webinars coming up. As always, if you have any suggestions, please email webinar at sparksystems.com. I'd like to thank everybody for their attendance and I'd like to thank Nizam especially for uh, his uh, fantastic overview and introduction to ProLaborate. Uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or you'd like to um, some follow-up. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have everyone join us and uh, thank you Nizam and thank you to our audience and uh, it's been great to get a nice simple overview of how ProLaborate can help. Did you have any final comments Nizam? No, thank you very much Scott for putting this together in a very short span of time and thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, it, we had a EA Global Summit a couple of weeks back and we had a really a great set of speakers and a number of sessions. Again, Scott's channel, I mean, Spark Systems channel has all those videos being loaded as well. There were close to about 42 presenters uh, who presented in a variety of topics. So if someone here is looking for EA related information, you could come to the YouTube channel and have a look at those EA Global Summit uh, webinars, I mean, all the videos as well. Lots and lots of free content, which is always fantastic. So. Uh... Uh, thank you and uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night to everyone around the world and I uh, look forward to seeing you at a future webinar. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, stay safe and uh, look after one another. Thank you. Thanks, Scott.